And if you didn't see him, more than likely you heard him. Thunderstorms rolled through the area last night, leaving damage behind. We are taking a look at the cleanup efforts this noon. And thousands of people woke up without power. We have the latest from CPS Energy. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Oh, we definitely needed the rain, but maybe not like this. Last night's nasty weather leading to flooded streets, downed trees, and power outages. This is video from I-35 near Seguin Road. You can see that just hours ago, drivers were stuck in high water. Yeah, we have team coverage this noon on the aftermath of the storms. We'll check in with Camelia Juarez in Comal County in just a minute. But first, let's check in with Mia Montgomery on the current conditions. What's happening now? What can we expect for the rest of the day, Mia? Yeah, absolutely. It has been a much quieter and drier start to this Friday compared to the noisy overnight that we saw across portions of South Central Texas still have the cloud cover on hand for most of Bear County, but especially just north of the county for places like Bernie already starting to see a little bit of sunshine return. As David mentioned, yes, we needed the rainfall. We didn't need the flooding streets and the hail as well as the uh, damaging winds that were reported with the strong thunderstorms. But check out these observed rainfall reports in and around the San Antonio area over the past 24 hours, over an inch and a half here in San Antonio at the airport, over two inches on the south outside at Stinson, just about an inch in Floresville, Hondo picking up half of an inch of rain as we zoom this in closer to the San Antonio Metro, just under three quarters of an inch in Converse, over an inch in Adkins, Alamo Ranch on the west side, picking up two inches of rain with that activity. Now we did have a couple of showers and a few downpours that managed to push through Bear County earlier this morning. For the most part, though, we are quiet out there this lunchtime hour and that will be the theme throughout the remainder of the afternoon. You can see we still do have the cloud cover outside with live cam, but again, over the next hour or two, we're really going to start to see that sunshine work back into San Antonio. Temperatures are currently in the low 70s, but as we see more of those blue skies return, you can see later on this afternoon, upper 70s and low 80s out there on the thermometer. Lower humidity will filter in as well with some wind gusts upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Now, yes, last night's storms were able to produce the hail, the strong winds, lightning and heavy rainfall, which did cause some damage across parts of South Central Texas. Our Camelia Juarez is live in Comal County, where one Canyon Lake property sustained tree damage from those strong winds. How's it looking out there this lunchtime hour, Camelia? Mia, I got to tell you, it's a mess out here. Take a look at this branch right here. It looks like it was just shredded all down the middle. And then take a look over here. This tree over here, it looks like somebody karate chopped it down the middle, like it was split right down the middle. And then if we just look a little bit to the left, this tree over here looks like it was pulled right out of the ground. Nearly every tree in this section was split, snapped, twisted, or torn up. Fortunately, no one who lives in these homes was hurt and there was no damage to the houses. The crazy part is that we've been driving around the area and we haven't seen anything as messy as this. TxDOT came by to replace a sign. I mean, it was completely bent over and some of the power lines need fixing. I, you know, I spoke to you earlier and you mentioned I spoke to Mia earlier and she said that there was a tornado warning here last night, but no official reports of a tornado. But for now, property owners in this area say it could take up to a week to, you know, trim down these trees, burn everything up and clear up this mess. Back to you, Tiffany. Thank you, Camelia. That is good news. No one was hurt. Now, there was no such thing as the calm after the storm. The bad weather overnight gave way to uprooted trees and high water rescues this morning. Katrina Weber has that story from one trouble spot near Highway 151 and Pin Road. Between the winds overnight and the leftover rainwater like this, the day got off to a rough start for a lot of people, and the tough times may not be over yet. Some have been left with a mess to clean up, while for others, there are extensive repairs that are needed. Nature's bad side came out with a vengeance and made a mark on neighborhoods all across the area. On the far west side, the wind wiped out a backyard fence, tossed plastic trash cans like paper bags, and toppled entire trees. While things looked bad from a distance for the owner of this SUV on Culebra Road, it seems Lady Luck must have intervened. The tree fell just right and missed crushing it. Still, others lost their cars to rushing water. Out here on West Commerce near Pin Road, 
A river rose up and nearly swept away a driver. San Antonio police say someone with a bucket truck plucked her from the roof of her car just in time. Despite barricades there calling for drivers to turn around, others also chanced it, only to get stopped by police. And just like the water, firefighters kept running throughout the morning, crisscrossing the city and going from one rescue to another. But despite all the water rescues that firefighters had to make, there were no reports of any injuries. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Another major concern during all that nasty weather, power outages. According to CPS Energy, as many as 45,000 people were impacted at some point last night or this morning. So let's take a look at how many outages are still active right now. You can see things have gotten a whole lot better. There are just over 300 outages at this hour, and that's affecting about 3,700 people. Right now, crews are out working to fix the rest of these outages. Part of the reason so many people ended up in the dark, lightning strikes. CPS says that it recorded 8,000 lightning strikes during the storms. They're also working to repair 37 downed wires. You can report down lines to CPS Energy at 210-353-HELP. And those outages also affected some local schools, according to a Northside ISD spokesperson. Strauss Middle School and Morales Elementary are expected to be without power all day today. Other schools have, partially outage, have partial outages. The district contacted parents telling them they could come pick up their children from those affected schools. And last night's storms may serve as a reminder to make sure you have essentials like flashlights. And if you don't, you can stock up this weekend tax free. The state is offering a sales tax holiday on essential items like generators, flashlights, batteries and first aid kits. This starts tomorrow and ends on Monday. There is no limit on the number of items purchased, but there are price limits for individual items. We have a list of the items that will be eligible for the sales tax holiday on KSAT.com. And if you're ready to start your spring cleaning, why not start with your medicine cabinet? Tomorrow is prescription drug take back day and you've got a chance to safely dispose of medications that you don't need anymore. You can drop off all of them at one several collection sites across the city from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. We have the full list of those collection sites posted for you right now on KSAT.com. This noon, a fire on the northwest side still under investigation. It broke out just outside of a restaurant. It happened just before midnight in the 4800 block of Evers. That's near Bandera Road. Firefighters arrived to find heavy smoke coming from the building. Investigators believe it started in a storage building behind the restaurant. Everyone was able to make it out okay. The fire investigation team is now looking into what sparked that blaze. And in San Antonio, firefighters say an electrical problem caused an attic fire that damaged a house on the city's west side. It happened just before 1230 this morning on the 1700 block of West Houston Street. That's near West Commerce. Four people in the home got out safely and there were no injuries. A mother who tragically lost her young son is now working to help other families avoid their heartache. How you can help this weekend. Now to Washington, where at any moment the U.S. Supreme Court could hand down its ruling on mephipristone, the abortion drug. The high court twice extended its own deadlines to make a decision, and the final one expires at midnight. ABC's Justin Finch tells us that the country is now waiting to learn whether the abortion pill will remain widely available or face restrictions supported by lower courts. Decision day for the Supreme Court. At issue, access to mifepristone, the abortion pill that has been the subject of conflicting lower court rulings. The justices are now considering a lower court ruling that would only allow approval of mifepristone up to seven weeks of pregnancy instead of 10, require three in-person doctor visits, and no longer allow the pill to be available by mail. The high court has a number of options, including allowing the restrictions to go into effect, even in states where abortion is legal, taking the case up themselves less than one year after overturning Roe versus Wade, or sending the case back to the lower courts to be worked out. The anti-abortion group Alliance Defending Freedom filed the initial Mifepristone lawsuit, now spurring the high court to act. 
The group argues that the FDA's approval of the drug in 2000 was flawed and didn't factor in safety risks. A Texas federal judge agreed. Senate Democrat Tammy Baldwin slamming that decision on CNN. The ruling uh, was devoid of science. It appears clear to me that it's part and parcel of a hard right effort to ban access to abortion nationwide. The Biden administration and Mifepristo manufacturer Danko Laboratories are calling on the court to uphold the FDA's approval. And the high court now hours away from making its decision. Court watchers say this double delay may suggest one or more justices could be working on opinions. Justin Finch, ABC News at the Supreme Court. And back here at home, live camp, 71 degrees. It is cloudy. It's hard to believe everything that just happened overnight. Yeah, a lot of those floods and everything were back to like normal. And it was just so noisy. I know oh, a lot God. of people were waking up because, mm. yes, a lot of rumbles of thunder and a lot of lightning as well. But, hey, at least in the rain sense, over the aquifer is up over a foot this Friday. So that is at least some good news. 636.1 molds, though, unfortunately, have climbed into the high category following last night's rain. Pecan, oak and pine all low in the pollen count. Now, we're not finished with the rain chances. In fact, Sunday does look to be a little soggy. We'll get you those details after the break. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Niosa began as a harvest festival on the grounds of Mission San Jose in what year? Was it A, 1974, B, 1891, or C, 1936? The answer, after the break. Niosa began as a harvest festival on the grounds of Mission San Jose in what year? The answer is C, 1936. So I'm at home last night. I got my KSAT weather app on my phone, and I'm watching this radar and the storm come right, in, and then it turns and goes right underneath me. I said, I got nothing. Not one drop of rain out of that wow. first one that nailed San Antonio. Yeah. And then 11 o'clock last night, I went, ooh, guess I'm making up for that. <laughs> I was going to say, at least you didn't Bam. get any of the, the original hail, right, and strong, strong winds that were associated with that storm. Ooh. But, yes, um, it was definitely noisy mm. and ended up canceling Fiesta Fiesta. So that was not fun. Um, but, yeah, we saw that first storm move out of the area, really dissipated in Southern Bear County. And then we had that second round that moved through after the night beat last night, and that lingered into the early morning hours of this morning. Now, again, we've been talking about the rain. We had flooded roadways. We had some issues out there, especially in poor drainage, low-lying areas, even some construction zones. But some of that rain actually fell in the areas that needed it most. So this is the drought monitor that was released yesterday morning. It does not include the rain that we saw last night. But you see this maroon color here that is still impacting the western portions of Bear County and then stretches up into the hill country. That's exceptional drought, the highest category of drought that we actually have. And you can see as we overlay the observed rainfall totals over the past 24 hours. For instance, Pipe Creek was able to collect over three and a half inches of rain. Even the Bernie Stage area over an inch and a half of rain. At least it's good news that the area that has the worst drought impacts right now was able to pick up on some of that activity. And we did have a few showers here in Bear County earlier this morning in the 9 a.m. hour. You can see we're pretty quiet here locally, but just off to the the south. Here's Live Oak County and stretching over to McMullen County there near Choke Canyon. A couple of showers have just popped up as we see the front continue to work its way farther off to the south. Here in San Antonio, we're already starting to see some sunshine return, especially across the northern portions of Bear County, and that's going to be the theme here over the next few hours. So rain chances come to an end. It's only an isolated chance for this morning anyways. And as we head into the the later portions of this afternoon, we are
expecting more blue skies to take over and that's going to lead to a nice end to the work week, especially considering we just had a very noisy night across portions of south central Texas. Temperature wise 71 right now, a dew point of 63, so it still is a little bit muggy when you do step outside, but that's going to change over the next few hours as well. We will start to see those northeast winds filter in some drier air and lower humidity throughout the afternoon. 71 in Kerrville, 83 already though in Del Rio. Valverde County was able to see the sunshine return a little bit earlier this morning, so temperatures have been able to warm a bit more efficiently. Same in Carrizo Springs, 82 this hour, 73 in Pleasanton and 72 over in Kennedy. Again, as we see those blue skies take back over, temperatures climb into the upper 70s and low 80s out there this afternoon. And then if you're stepping out for any of those Friday evening plans, pleasant conditions, especially with dew points dropping, we'll see those thermometers transition from the low 70s into the upper 60s later on tonight. But again, this afternoon is going to be somewhat seasonable for this time of year, around 81 to 83 here in town, 82 in Floresville, 84 in Pleasanton, 86 over in Sabinal. We will see that lower humidity and clear Clearing skies make for a cooler start to the day tomorrow. We're starting off in the 50s here in town. I think it's possible though by tomorrow night, maybe an isolated storm could pop up as we start to see that humidity once again return. Very quick return of those dew points. Low 80s though for your Saturday afternoon. And then check out Sunday. As that moisture works its way back into the area, combine that with another disturbance pushing across the Lone Star State. And it is looking likely that we could find numerous showers and thunder storms out there and if we do find that temperatures could be contained to the 60s so we'll monitor that probably a good idea to keep the rain gear handy and maybe into next week as well with some additional lingering isolated chances for rain guys got a little rain on there for monday we'll see what we can do about it i know All it's right. a big day big Prepare. day hair a local nonprofit organization offering services to families who have a child with a medical diagnosis is getting ready to host their biggest fundraising event. A San Antonio mother shares the importance of their programs next. Any baby can San Antonio serves thousands of families with children and youth facing serious or developmental challenges. Right now they are getting ready to host their biggest fundraiser of the year. I spoke with a local mother who says the organization changed her life and her family's story is now changing other people's lives as well. My son's name was Rudy. Uh, we called him Bumblebee because he liked the Transformers. Rudy Alejos was a young boy who also loved superheroes. Abby Eckmark says her son Rudy was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when he was three years old. Doctor who diagnosed him said that if I was gonna get any kind of help that Any Baby Can was the place to start. Abby says she found guidance at the nonprofit Any Baby Can San Antonio. She learned from other parents and was provided with several resources. But in 2011, their lives changed. On August 16th, Abby's apartment building caught fire. I just remember opening the door and seeing a fire and trying to get us out and I couldn't and he passed away. Rudy was only six years old. Abby began recovering from burns all over her body. Although this was the hardest time of her life, she wanted to honor her son. I want to make something of his life. I want people to remember him and I came back to any baby can. Rudy was honored at the eighth annual Walk for Autism with the creation of Rudy's Playground, an area where all kids can play. Since Abby has um, come forward and provided such an eye-opening experience for our families, we've changed up a lot of what we've done to educate the families that we have on, the, on safety. Any Baby Can San Antonio and Abby didn't want another family to suffer this tragedy, so they created training for community members about fire safety and information about other hazards. Plus, they put together this toolkit for the community. They have the safety locks for kids. They have things, especially for children who are nonverbal. So like stop, wait, sit, help. Abby they hopes to continue spreading her message on fire safety and sharing Rudy's story at this year's Walk for Autism, the nonprofit's largest fundraising event. 
the last time Rudy was with us at the Walk for Autism, we were Rudy's angels. Then he passed away, and so we became Rudy's heroes. The 19th Walk for Autism will be held Saturday, April 22nd, starting at 8 a.m. at Palo Alto College. All proceeds go towards funding critical programs. Abby invites the community. If there is somebody watching at home and they have a child with autism and they're not involved with any baby can or they were just recently diagnosed, just know that you are not alone. Thank you, Abby, for sharing that incredible story. And once again, the walk for autism starts tomorrow morning at 8. It's happening at Palo Alto College on West Villarette Boulevard. Road rage incidents are on the rise. The advice law enforcement has for drivers looking to avoid trouble when they're behind the wheel. Coming up. SA Live is keeping the party going and celebrating Fiesta. Today, Aww. they're taking a crack at creating Look their at own cascarones. We're checking in with the team in the next half hour. Nothing like a little cascaroni cracking. <laughs> and then you have to clean it up. Well, yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you went grocery shopping? It can be a grueling task, especially with foods costing more these days. But planning a menu and sticking to it can not only help you save money, but also eat better. Today at 5, Marilyn Morris explains when picking your produce, why convenience isn't always the way to go. How could anybody have missed the light show last night? Did anybody sleep in this town anywhere? It's a great Any question. You know, there's some baby that was knocked out that just never woke up. You know, there's babies. That's I my wish, daughter. <laughs> I wish I would have been. She, she slept. That daughter slept. slept too? Perfect. Yeah, you put on the noise machine. Good to go. <laughs> didn't have didn't have any issues wow. there. I'm, I'm happy for you, Tiffany. <laughs> that probably made your night a little bit easier. Yes. yes, I definitely woke up to the storms overnight, as I'm sure many of us Ooh. did, because yes, they were noisy and they were so bright. There was just a ton of lightning strikes associated with that activity. Now we've got the front that kind of is the catalyst behind the weather pattern that sparked up those strong storms. That's pushed through South Central Texas and behind that, well, yes, it is still a little humid this lunchtime hour here in San Antonio. Check out portions of the hill country. This is a look at dew points, how we measure the moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Those dew points are starting to drop. This brown color is that drier air that is filtering farther off to the south. So as that continues to move through the region this afternoon, afternoon, it is going to start to feel a little bit more comfortable out there, especially for Friday evening plans and Saturday morning activities. Now, temperature wise, we're still in the low 70s here in San Antonio, where the cloud cover has been able to hold on just a little bit longer. But you take a little jog off to the west, closer to the Rio Grande, already low 80s for places like Del Rio, as well as Eagle Pass, just because that sunshine has already been able to take over there as well. So as as we head into this afternoon, we see more blue skies here in San Antonio. That is going to help boost our temperatures into the upper 70s and low 80s, and we will stay dry throughout the remainder of the day, I think, too. Into Saturday, still a mostly dry day, maybe an isolated pop-up storm tomorrow night. That's going to turn into a scattered storm chance into early Sunday morning, and yes, maybe even closer to widespread for the back half of the weekend. So we'll talk about the fact that we're not finished with those rain chances, and yes, also needing to monitor the potential for some isolated rain chances to linger into next week. All those details coming up in just a few, guys. All right, Mia, thank you. We'll look forward to that. The maker of Narcon nasal spray is working to lower the cost of the life-saving product. The company says it's aiming for an out-of-pocket price of less than $50 for the over-the-counter sales. Its goal is to match the price that government agencies, nonprofits, and first responders pay. The wholesale price is $125. Pricing for over-the-counter Narcon will be left to individual retailers. The company that makes the product aims to have Narcon available online and in stores by late summer. Additional doses of the COVID-19 bivalent booster have been given the green light for some adults by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and now the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. CNN's Mandy Gaither breaks down the new guidance and what it means for you. Across the U.S., COVID-19 cases, deaths, and hospitalizations continue to trend down, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. One of the reasons why things are so much better now than where they were a year or two ago is because 
almost everybody now has some level of protection. Dr. Frank Esper with Cleveland Clinic says the protection is either through a prior infection or vaccines, but early data suggests protection has started to wane from the bivalent booster, which health experts say protects against the original strain of the COVID-19 virus, Omicron, and its spinoffs. That's why the FDA has updated its guidance for the most vulnerable to the disease, allowing people 65 and older Older to get an additional dose of the Pfizer or Moderna bivalent vaccines now, as long as it's been four months since their last one. And most people with certain degrees of immunocompromise can get a second dose of a bivalent vaccine at least two months after the last one. What we're trying to do with our vaccination response is to make sure that everybody's antibody levels you know, remain protective so that they can fight off uh, the infection. For immunocompromised children ages six months through four years, eligibility for an additional bivalent vaccine will depend on the vaccine previously received, so talk to a doctor. Another big change is that most unvaccinated people may now receive a single dose of a bivalent vaccine rather than multiple doses of the original single-strain vaccines. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. For everyone not covered by the latest guidance, the FDA says it intends to make decisions about future vaccinations after receiving recommendations on the fall strain composition from its advisory committee in June. Go easy on hawking that horn when you hit the road. That is the advice from DPS troopers amid a spike in road rage shootings. The number of road rage shootings has doubled in the U.S. since 2018. That's according to researchers who say just last year alone, someone was shot and injured or killed in a road rage incident every 16 hours in the U.S. The Texas Department of Public Safety says being a courteous driver goes a long way to avoiding problems. We have to. We have to. We have to learn to contain ourselves. Unfortunately, we've got some very inexperienced drivers that are going on right now that are, that are behind the wheel, and, and those individuals have access to, and we don't know what they're capable of. DPS says if you have problems on the road, you should avoid eye contact and obscene hand gestures. If you can get an ID of the vehicle and license plate and get away to the nearest exit and populated area where you can call 911. Hey, even though Fiesta is off to kind of a wet and gloomy start, the party is going to continue this weekend. We've got a look at the events taking place Saturday and Sunday. Earth Day is tomorrow. And if that's making your green thumb itch, the city is giving away more free trees. How you can snag yours after the break.